Recently, KK Clue did an amazing video covering the Tamagotchi releases. But the Tamagotchi franchise's little brother could honestly do well to have a similar video. So if you haven't already, definitely check out the video by KK Clue about the never-ending rabbit hole of Tamagotchi releases. It's a, it's a wonderful video, and I'm not just saying that because it featured some of the footage from various videos of um, from my own reviews, but it's just an amazing video, especially if you are not so sure about the releases from the Tamagotchi side of things. Maybe you're more familiar with the Digimon side of things. So absolutely check out this video if you haven't already. But there's just a few things I do want to go over before I jump into the history of the Digimon Virtual Pets. So first of all, I will not be covering the Digivices unless they have Virtual Pet mechanics. I will, however, mention the Vital Bracelet. And this is because Digivices honestly deserve their own video, so make sure you like this video and leave a comment if you'd be interested in a video going over the history of Digimon Digivices. In addition to that, basically all of the virtual pets that I'll be mentioning in this video I have previously reviewed in other videos, so I'll be going over a little bit about what each virtual pet is, but I won't be going into any huge amount of detail and depth because in all likelihood, I've already covered the uh, the virtual pet that I'm talking about. So this will all be under the virtual pet review section of this channel. So if you want more information about any particular virtual pet, check out to see if I've already spoken about it before and uh, what my thoughts are on that virtual pet. So in any case, let's get into it. The Digimon series of virtual pets starts off in 1997 and here we have the original Digimon Virtual Pet release, and we had multiple versions come out until around 1998 with the version 5. Then, of course, in the Australian and Southeast Asian release side of things, we also have the version 6, which was in the early 2000s. So, the Digimon Virtual Pet was originally released as a spin-off of the Tamagotchi series, and it got such a positive reception and... Basically, it had so much of a following. Well, I'm trying to find a better word to say it. So much of a following. I feel like that's not English. But anyway, uh, it had a pretty good following and the reception for it was so positive that the release spawned its own franchise across multiple forms of media. It got a manga, it got anime, and it got video games, and it basically kept on going up from there. So this release spawned the start of the franchise just about. And then in 1998... It saw the release of the Digimon Pendulum, now known as the Digimon Pendulum Original, but at the time there was only the one Pendulum, so it was just the Digimon Pendulum series, and that had releases up until the year 2000, and the pet had a different design from the original Digimon's brick design. The Pendulum continued on from the original Digimon release, but added the Pendulum shaking motion to make training more interactive, and the Mons featured on the Pendulum were also stronger, and they came from a different part of the digital world called the Folder Continent, rather than File Island. The release also added an additional feature to the connection functionality, other than just battling, like the original one had, and that was the ability to Jogress, which means to basically fuse Digimon. Jogress is a combination of words. It is joint, and it's progress. Jogress. This was called DNA Digivolution in the English dub, so you might see some people call this DNA Digivolution or Jogress. Both are correct because they're from different uh, or different languages, but they mean the same thing. Same with Digifuse, which seems to be also used, especially in moderns. That seems to be the used term instead of DNA Digivolution. But in any case, that's the Digimon Pendulum original. And then in the year 2000, I'm just going to hit this sort of counts. I feel like it mostly counts but we had the release of the Pocket Digimon World games. Three versions of this game were released, with different Digimon on each, and it uses Sony's Pocket Station to raise your Digimon, and the PlayStation games are used for evolving and looking at various clips and images that you unlock from the Pocket Station. Now, I did do a video on this. As of recording this, it hasn't been released yet, but once this video is out, so should the Pocket Station video. So if you want to know more about that, 
please check out that video, especially if you want more uh, videos about the Pocket Station. If that video does well, I'll be likely making more, especially on how to go about using the Pocket Station. So I'm, I just thought I'd slot that in as a bit, bit of an honourable mention, especially because I've been playing around with them a lot lately. So also in the early 2000s, Australia and Southeast Asia, again like with the version 6, also saw the release of the Digimon Pendulum Cycle, which was seen as both a localization of the Pendulum release as well as a continuation of the Digimon original range. These had various unique features which would not appear in Digimon toys again, such as reverting back to child form at bedtime each day, the ability to evolve all the way to Super Ultimate within a few hours of hatching, and weight-based evolution. I have done entirely too many videos on the Digimon Pendulum Cycle. It, uh, it was so mysterious that nobody on the internet really knew how it evolved until around 2015, so over a decade after it was released. So it's kind of a weird one, but it's something that's sort of close to my heart, but in a, a weird kind of, I spent too much time working out how these evolve kind of way, if that makes sense. Uh, there's also the Digimon Neo, which has the same shell and design as the Pendulum Cycle. However, it's not a virtual pet and is more a pedometer quest-based digivice. It has bigger sprites in the cycle used, but it has the same shell, which is kind of weird. I've also covered this, but yeah, it's not a virtual pet. It's just a digivice. This, again, was also Southeast Asia and Australia exclusive, so... Don't expect to get them from Japanese proxy sites, basically. And then, of course, Bandai Asia releasing the Pendulum Cycle, the Neo, the version 6, also had the release of the Digimon D-Gather, which was a continuation of the D-Terminal release, but for the series of Tamers and featured a virtual pet-esque side game, which is why I'm talking about it. I count it sort of as a pseudo virtual pet, so I thought I'd slot a quick honourable mention in, like with the Pocket Station. The other analyzer toys didn't really feature any virtual pet mechanics. They were more companions to virtual pets, whereas the D-Gather is a pseudo virtual pet in itself, so I just thought I'd quickly slot that in. Then on to 2002, we had the first two versions of the Pendulum Progress released, with the third version releasing in 2003. The Progress continued to add on mechanics from the earlier releases, this time adding in Jogress compatibility between not only other Pendulum Progresses, but the D-Scanner which was released alongside it. The sprites were also much larger than on previous models, and it removed the icons from the top and featured a menu to scroll through instead. The version 3 of the Pendulum Progress also added a pause feature, which very much appreciated when a virtual pet has the ability to pause, especially on days that are a little bit busier. I feel like that's a great addition. So prior to this, we didn't have a pause feature. You either had to just give it up and just let it die or let it uh, get bad care, I guess or you would have to hope that going to the set time screen paused it. But no, not only from, not from this day onwards, basically, the Pendulum Progress allowed you to pause it. Big fan of that. Thank you so much for that Bandai. But again, it was only in the version 3 onwards. And then, of course, in 2003, shortly after the Pendulum Progress's release, we had the entirety of the Pendulum X series released in 2003. The X featured new added X antibody Digimon and featured its own storyline and quest mode as well as added items. So this sort of continued on from the Pendulum Progress having a big screen and a menu that you scroll through, but added X antibody Digimon. And these were all like a new, basically all the Digimon here were just new Digimon or uh, X antibody themed Digimon. And I thought that was pretty cool. It tried to do something different. And that's something I also appreciate from the Digimon Virtual Pet releases is that each one has its own mechanic, but it sort of still builds on the original idea. And I don't know, I, I kind of like that. It feels like it's continually digivolving, if you will. So over in Bandai Asia, there was also the localized version of the Pendulum X called the D-Cyber, 
which had more or less the same gameplay but in very different shell. It was in the shape of a flip phone because it was 2003 and basically I had one of these uh, but like all D cybers it uh, it broke. So the wires between both screens on the D cyber are very weak and because you use, do this a lot because it's a flip phone uh, that weakens the wire. So Unfortunately, that's the story with a lot of D-Cybers. I actually gave mine away, kind of regret it, but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have bothered fixing it anyway. So that's why I don't have a D-Cyber. I'm a serial breaker, so sue me. So after that, there was a bit of a gap until 2005, which saw the release of all four Digimon Accelerator virtual pets. The Excel added on a new way to power up your Digimon for battle, which is the Axel Grip, but also added the ability to scan chips in your hand for items and DNA to help your Digimon evolve. The pet used the amount and type of DNA given to determine evolution rather than care like in previous models. Again, trying to be something unique and different, adding on to the original mechanics from previous versions, and that's something I really like. It also has a quest mode like the Pendulum X does, and it's I, I really like the Excel, but it's kind of one that... Uh, a lot of people don't like or they like and there seems to be no in between so that was cool uh, another unique feature was that it had three prongs for the connectivity between other pets rather than just two so on going from here things tend, tend to even either have two or three and hang on do the pendulum X's also have three I feel like yeah, the pendulum X's also have three so from around 2003 and 2005 we saw the existence of three prongs rather than two. So things with three prongs obviously can't connect to things with two prongs because they don't match up. Then in 2005, again, we saw the release of the Mini. So we had the Mini version 1, which was released in late 2005, and the other two versions were released in 2006. They were more or less smaller versions of the original Digimon released and this was for the 10th anniversary. They had similar gameplay, but in a smaller toy than the original, and it went back to smaller sprites, but it also had three prongs for connectivity, helping you unlock things on the XL, especially the ultimate version, if you do enough connections with the mini, because three prongs. Then again in 2006, alongside Digimon's fifth season, which I love, I've made a video on why I love Digimon Saver slash Data Squad, so at least alongside that, 2006 saw the release of the Digivice IC and Burst Digivices. Yes, I said Digivice twice there, I just realised. And they both communicate using IR communication, and in the case of the IC, also had the same three-prong system as the Mini and the Accelerator and could communicate as such. The Data Link did also get an English release, which was the English release of the Digivice IC, but it's not a traditional virtual pet and it's more of a quest bias device without a pedometer. Now, the Japanese release of the IC uh, is probably the only Digivice that actually counts as a virtual pet. All the other Digivices are not virtual pets. They are quest-based pedometers or just quest-based toys. The Data Link, which is the English IC, is also a quest-based device but without a pedometer. And I think I prefer the, the virtual pet aspect of the Digivice IC. And it's probably my favourite Digivice and Virtual Pet from Digimon. So it's, it's, it's the, basically the one that I recommend. And it's not just because I like Savers, though that probably helps a little bit. And then in 2007, we had the release of the Digimon Twins. And that also featured IR communication and a pretty unique ability, which I don't think has really been seen since. It's not just connecting to battle but the Mons actually interact as well. As it shared the IR functionality, it could also connect to the IC and Burst pets, which was pretty sweet, and the twin releases focused even more on connectivity rather than anything else compared to previous virtual pets for Digimon. Once again, the twin used smaller sprites that we've seen before, and Digimon pets would mostly revert back to having smaller sprites from here on. Then there was a bit of another gap until 2010, which was during the Cross Wars era. I need to remember to breathe. I keep on forgetting to breathe, and I need to do that because 
I will not be conscious by the end of this video, so breathing time. So yes, 2010, Cross Wars era. We didn't get many virtual pets, however the Cross Mini did have virtual pet elements and it used the same shell as the original Mini, but it can't connect to it despite also having three prongs. I haven't really done many videos on the Cross Minis, maybe I will one day, but I don't really fully count them as virtual pets. The way you evolve is you evolve by battling uh, the Digimon in the Colosseum mode on the toy, uh, and that's how you get evolutions, basically. You can basically grind it out very quickly, but it does have a few aspects from other Digimon virtual pets, especially the regular mini. It also... Uh, it, it also has, uh, like, you can feed it, but I don't think your Digimon dies. So it's a virtual pet, but also it's probably on the not so much of a virtual pet as uh, the other pets that I've mentioned in this video. There was also the Monitormon toy, which wasn't really a virtual pet, but it is very cute. It kind of acts like a uh, the analyzer kind of area of uh, of the accessories, but it doesn't connect to the mini or anything. And you basically have to catch the uh, the Digimon that appear so you can see them. It's a cute idea, very unique, uh, and it kind of sits on your desk and acts like a monitormon. It's very cute, but I wouldn't really call it a virtual pet. But I just thought I'd go about mentioning it, especially because there was nothing otherwise between 2007 and 2017 other than this small window in 2010, which, again, does, doesn't really have many virtual pets. So now we moved on to 2017. We're out of the Digimon Dark Ages, and after this long gap between releases, we finally had the Digimon Monster version 20th, also known as the DM20, and this was released in Japan in 2017, but would later go on to be released internationally in 2019. So, as the name implies, the DM20 was released for the 20th anniversary of the franchise, and each contained all of the version 1 to 5 Digimon eggs from the original, as well as some additional new eggs to choose from, and one special connection uh, unlock egg per version of the DM20. It also added Jogress, which the original did not have. And then in 2018, for the anniversary for the Digimon Pendulum, we got the Digital Monster Pendulum 20th, and it gave the original Pendulum release the same treatment as the DM20 did for the original Digimon, so eggs on each of them, but it split out the versions, because there were more versions of the Pendulum than there were of the Digimon original, or at least that's what Bandai wants you to think, so they made you buy more to get all the eggs. So that was for the Pendulum 20th, which doesn't have an English release, but the DM20 did at least get an English release, quite a large English release, which is very good, because, and this is something I should mention, all of the Japanese virtual pets are, at least nowadays, are premium Japan only, which means that you pre-order them, and if you don't pre-order them, that means you effectively have to pay a higher price from someone in the second-hand market. So this is a shame, the releases outside Japan don't have this issue, but if something is Japan exclusive, it tends to be, uh, you've got to pay the premium Bandai Japan tax, unfortunately, so you have to import it, or wait, and then risk paying a stupid price afterwards. So th that is a shame about these Japanese exclusive releases, like the Pendulum 20th. So we had the Pendulum 20 in 2018, and then in 2019 and 2021 outside of Japan, the Digimon X was released, and it was seen as both a sequel to the Pendulum X, as well as the original Digimon, as it was back in the brick shell. So Brick being the similar shell and style as the original Digimon that the DM20 also had, but the DMX featured X-Antibody and X-Carrier Digimon and the Xyrol from the Pendulum X. As of recording, the Wave 3 of the DMX has not been released in English. Uh, it was released in Japan 2020, I believe, so quite a while ago, and as of recording this, there's been no news of the DMX 3 
being released outside of Japan. Now, my theory on this is because there was a slight mix-up with the English release of the second wave of the DMX that, because Bandai had to fix that mix-up, recall a bunch of stock, and then fix the programming, that likely cost them both time and money. I'm starting to think that the DMX3 has been effectively cancelled in English, which is a shame because the DMX3 has Palmon on it, or Palmon X rather. So that's just a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. In 2020 and 2021, the Pendulum got a sequel in the form of the Digimon Pendulum Z, and while you couldn't pick an egg like you could with the Pendulum 20, it did feature a huge range of Digimon to raise and a large amount of new Digimon that were added for the purpose of this virtual pet to be fairly nostalgic in terms of their designs. Some of these designs are just great. I'm a big fan of the Pendulum Z. Again, this was also premium Bandai Japan only, but isn't as hard to come by as the Pendulum 20th at the very least. Also in 2021, and this is kind of a virtual pet again, but also kind of isn't, we had the Vital Bracelet Digital Monster being released in 2021. And yeah, it feels a bit like a cross between the virtual companion nature of the Digivice releases, but with some mechanics of the virtual pet releases. It's gamified fitness, but the Digimon on it does die if you leave it off your wrist and awake and active. So your Digimon does die, but you don't really feed it like you would with a traditional virtual pet. So it's kind of, it is and it isn't a virtual pet, but it's also a Digivice. In late 2021, a slightly upgraded version called the Digivice V, which was later released in mid-2022 in the US under the name Vital Hero. Again, I've covered the Vital Bracelet fairly often. I really love the Vital Bracelet. Again, it's not really a virtual pet, more leaning towards the Digivice side of things, but again, I'm, I'm mentioning it anyway because it's got virtual pet aspects. We also have the Ver Revival, which was also released around this time. It was announced and released with very little fanfare due to the fact it was advertised to be the same as the 2017 DM20, but that turned out to not be the case, actually. The DM Revival actually has additional quality of life improvements from the DM20, and a lot of people skipped on it because they thought it would just be the same as the DM20. However, it was not. It had those great quality of life improvements, like the ability to freeze it rather than just put it to sleep, and the <laughs> decrease in poop, I think is the best way to say it. They fixed the, uh, the pooping too often issue from the DM20, and various other features as well, so it's kind of a shame that they didn't announce those features and functionality and quality of life improvements in the announcement because it just kind of was released very quietly, but I just thought I'd mention it because a lot of places don't actually talk about the DM Revival because they skipped it because they thought it'd be the same, but it wasn't. And then in 2022, the VB got an upgrade, the Vital Bracelet BE, with pretty similar mechanics and a lot of quality of life improvements. Again, I've done lots of videos on the, on the Vital Bracelet BE, so check that out if you're not quite sure about the differences or what you can do on the BE. And then, in 2023, for the 25th anniversary of the franchise, Bandai released all five versions of the original digital monster, but with a colour screen. They accurately titled this release by calling it the Digital Monster Colour. Various additional features were added, such as Mega Forms, as the original only had up to perfect level, the ability to unlock and change backgrounds, single player, player battles, and the ability to be charged via USB-C. New Digimon were also added for this release. So, very exciting. Again, got lots of videos on the DMC on this channel, so check that out because it's a newer release, you may not have heard about it as much. Again, uh, the Japanese release of this has been Premium Bandai Japan only, however, Premium Bandai US and Bandai Shop UK have them available at the very least, but because it's a more recent release, you can still probably buy it from Japan you want, Zen and TCG, or via proxy services. This video is not sponsored, uh, but that's just where you can get them. And uh, that's basically it for the history of Digimon Virtual Pets. I don't think I've forgotten e anything. I've gone through releases, I've gone through everything that I have behind me on the shelves, 
So I think that I've got everything. If I've forgotten something and it's probably going to be really obvious, let me know and shame me in the comment section below. So in any case, I hope that this video was useful to someone. I just thought that it was about time we had a full 1997 to 2023 history of Digimon video, especially after I was inspired by KK Clue's video on the Tamagotchi releases. Again, definitely check out that video if you haven't already. It, it's a really great, great one, and it's such a deep dive rabbit hole. This video is obviously shorter, but uh, yeah, definitely check out the Tamagotchi one. I just wanted a really concise uh, putting together of this topic because I know KK Clue spent, I believe, two years on that video. So I did not want to spend two years on, on this video. So check out, check out that video because a lot of uh, effort and work clearly went into it. So in any case, thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. And if you have subscribed, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your childhood friend who you used to play Digimon with. And all of a sudden they're saying, hey, are Digimon still releasing virtual pets? So do that. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.